So I already made another video that includes how to disassemble and reassemble this mouse. That's the weight reduction tutorial I did where I show you how I put all the holes in it. And I'm gonna come out with another video on how to do the paracord. And you actually lose five grams just by switching to a paracord in this mouse. I would definitely recommend it. It makes the mouse like 10 times better. Next, I'm gonna be painting, custom painting a G Pro wireless. Definitely gonna make a video on that. And I just wanna go over what kind of paint to use. So for the for the colors that you use, you want uh, I would recommend this brand, the Painter's Touch Two Times Ultra Cover. They have it at Home Depot and uh, in Walmart stores, I think too. And it's meant for plastic, and it works really well. Like it bonds to the plastic really well, and it just covers really well. I could tell when using this one compared to using the other kind of paint I was I used that this one was way better. A lot of different colors. Like they have 21 different colors. Just for the just for the color blue, and they have 17 different greens. They have an insane amount of colors. Um, but what I would not recommend is definitely do not use this brand to put the clear coat over on top of it. Um, I used some today, some of this for the first time today. Uh, I was fixing something on, on my car and the paint is fucking terrible i could not believe how bad it was it just it gets drips in it like instantly it's like way too thin and i definitely like i shook it up really good before i used it it was you know nice and hot temperature wise this stuff is terrible i went and tested it out too after the thing on the car i did and it's just tear it just drips so bad you can't put it on thick at all the paint that I use in the video that I definitely recommend is the stuff meant for automotive use. This clear coat right here, uh, quite a bit pricier, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, if you go to like an automotive parts store, probably if you buy a clear coat kind of paint that they have in the store, that'll probably work fine as well. Um, this is the kind I use in the video just because I had some lying around that I was using on cars before and it turned out really good. You can pile this stuff on really thick, make it look really glossy and give like depth to it and it looks really nice and it sticks really well. It's not going to drip super easy. You can, I mean, I use this stuff to paint the headlights on my car to make them clear again about five weeks ago and it's working fine. You know, it's this stuff's meant to last like 10 years on a car in, in sunlight. It's meant to be hit by bugs when you're going 70 miles an hour, so it's going to last on your mouse, no problem. The only thing, since this paint is not meant to be used with that Rust-Oleum paint, I would just wait the 48 hours of drying uh, <clears throat> for the Rust-Oleum to completely dry, and then sand that down lightly with some 1000 grit sandpaper before you use this, because I don't if you use this right over the Rust-Oleum before it's fully dry, I don't know, they might have a problem with the, with the chemicals, um, and you know that problem might happen like a month later or something. You don't really know So the first thing you want to do is take your mouse apart I mean obviously you could paint it when it's still together, but if you want to do a really good job on it You want to take it apart and This mouse here I have another video on how to fully disassemble it. If you want to know how to take apart the G402 <clears throat> And then the next thing you just want to do is just sand everything down that you're gonna paint I recommend using 600 grit you don't want to use a grit that's too coarse because <clears throat> you'll be able to see the scratches through the finished product. It won't look as nice. You don't want to use it something too fine because then the paint won't uh, grip it as well. And you have to scratch it up for the paint to stick to the surface or it's just going to peel off. And you can get 600 grit at an automotive supply store or obviously you could order it from eBay or Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description. Also recommend one of these gray scotch bright pads. It's another automotive thing. You get it in an automotive store. You can use this to sand down hard to reach spots like in this little like nook right there where you, it's kind of hard to get the sandpaper in. You can use this stuff <clears throat> to get the stuff like that that's really hard to reach. And you just want to make sure that you sand every little bit of it. Don't leave any of it unsanded. And at this, usually the surface will be pretty glossy when you when you start. So you'll be able to tell what's sanded and what's not sanded just by, you'll take that gloss out of it. Another little trick you can do to get in those little hard to reach spots, you could take a small screwdriver or something small and fold the sandpaper over it. And then kind of have like a hard edge to get in there with it. Now the next thing that you want to do is get some soapy water. 
brave all the parts down and just use some dish soap put a little of that in some water you could also dip it in it if you don't have a spray bottle but you want to use dish soap because it's a degreaser so it'll help you grease off from your hands <clears throat> and uh, this will get all the sanding dust also and you just want to wipe it down good to use a microfiber cloth it's another automotive tool because a microfiber cloth doesn't leave lint all over it but you know you don't need one of these you could use an old t-shirt or paper towel you're fine and after you've wiped all the dust off too you can see if you've sanded everything if you see any spots that are still glossy that means you didn't sand it good enough so you should go back and hit that up with the sandpaper and then you want these to get these completely dry you could use some compressed air or a hair dryer or you could also just leave them out in the sun or wait um, but for this next part you want them dry we're going to start masking stuff you don't want any water to get under the masking tape and if there's little drops of water under here you flip it over they could still get under the tape or get trapped under there and you don't want any water to be under the paint or under the tape so it could ruin it so you just want to get a decent masking tape first thing I'm going to do is mask off the logo right there that the light comes through so you're just going to put a piece of tape down on it and then if you can see through the tape a little bit to still see the logo it'll make this a lot easier you might be able to get away with using like a clear scotch tape as well but it isn't meant for masking paint so I'm not sure if maybe the paint would go under the edges of that you can just turn on the light on your phone put this over it and then it'll light it right up the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to want an exacto knife like this will be the best you could just use a plain razor blade or like a box cutter but it'll be easiest with this it's meant for doing really delicate work and you're going to want to use a brand new blade so it's as sharp as possible so you can get away with using the smallest amount of pressure as possible and it'll be easier to do this you don't want to use a lot of pressure because you don't, you don't want to cut into the plastic too much and you're just going to very carefully Cut right along the edge of this. Alright, I think I cut properly all the way around it, so this should just peel off. Now the first thing I want to do is just press it on there really good. Probably didn't press quite hard enough in a little spot with the knife. And that looks pretty clean. You can go back and touch up some of the edges with the knife. They're not as nice as you want them. That little thing there, you could cut it off or push it over. Now if you're just painting everything one solid color, just leave the pieces separate when you paint them. But make sure you tape over parts like this. And maybe parts like here that you don't want to get the paint over. The paint will make these parts thicker, and remember you didn't sand this, so you, the paint will also flake off. You want paint flaking off the inside of the mouse, and if the paint goes on here thick, the parts might not fit together properly. But since I'm going to do a design over mine, I'm going to put these pieces together and then tape them together so the design can continue over the parts and match up. So I'm going to tape it on the bottom first. And since this piece doesn't really have anything to stay on to on the bottom that lines up, I'm just going to go ahead and tape the top of it first, line it up correctly. And I'm going to be putting tape over the top anyway. Try to tape stuff down on the bottom a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and cover up the whole top of it with tape. And I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut out the parts that I want to get paint on. And I want to put like a bunch of thin lines across this, so.
Yeah, I've pretty got it where I want it now, so now it's ready to paint. Mm, first, you might want to mask up some stuff on the bottom, so make sure you don't get like overspray on it. But before you paint, I would clean it one more time, and then first thing I'm going to do is just press all the tape down really firmly over the whole thing to make sure none of the edges are lifting up and we don't get any paint underneath where we don't want it. Spray it down and wipe it off one more time to get all the grease off from your fingers and then after you do it this time don't touch where you're going to paint it again only touch on the tape. It'll keep the oils and stuff from your fingers off make sure that the paint sticks really well. And remember don't touch it where you paint it now and then now it's even more important to get the thing fully dry because there could be little drops of water, you know, underneath the tape or on the back of it. And remember when you're spraying paint, it puts a lot of force out, like wind out of it. And it can move droplets of water around that you didn't, weren't able to see, move them up and then get them on the paint. If you get the water in the paint, it's kind of going to ruin it. So. so now that it's ready to paint, go ahead and paint it. And I'm just using Rust-Oleum, just the normal stuff you buy at Home Depot. Should be fine. And you want to do thin coats. It's better to do like two thin coats than one thick coat. You really want to make sure that you don't get it on too thick. <clears throat> because you might end up with drips or just like bad texture. And you want to test it first, make sure it's spraying properly. It's better to spray paint when it's nice and hot out. You don't want to do it if it's below, like, real cold, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Spray paint doesn't really come out right. Yeah, just put, like, a really thin coat on it first. Better to start out really thin, that way if there's any problems with the paint uh, adhering to the surface, you'll know. If you want to speed up the drying, you can always use a hair dryer. Probably wait about 10 minutes between coats, 5-10 minutes. Pretty much when the gloss goes away, it's good for a second coat. And if you do get a drip or put the paint on too thick, you can fix it with sandpaper. Uh, you can just take that same 600 grit sand it down you might need to wait a while for the paint to dry first and you might want to wet sand it like use the soapy water spray that on and use the water to sand it because that paint will probably gunk up the sandpaper really bad and then after you sand it down you can go ahead and just spray it again and for certain colors you might want to use like a gray primer underneath first especially if you're painting like a really light color over black or I think red can be kind of transparent too. It can kind of change how the color looks to keep like dust and bugs out of the area. If you get any like dust or bugs stuck in the paint uh, with the base coats, with the color here, it's no big deal. You can take that 600 grit paper and, and wipe it out and kind of smooth it down. The edges got a little bit messed up like there. <clears throat> Hard to get it perfect. If you want to clean that up, you could take a little bit of acetone on like a little tiny piece of a rag and rub that, rub that off. Or you could kind of sand it, those edges down a bit later to make them cleaner. If you're going to put another color on like me and do more masking, you want to wait until this paint is pretty dry. Uh, it might take overnight. You don't want it to be sticky at all because when you put the tape over this paint, if it's still sticky, it's going to mess this paint up. This is what you want to look for here is the dry and recoat times. So the recoat time is the amount of time you wait or the window that you have to put on a second coat. So this says within an hour or after 48 hours. And I think the reason that it says within an hour, because if you uh, 
put another coat on <clears throat> before the hour is up. At least with the automotive paint I've used, it'll have like a chemical bond. So the two paints will bond chemically together. But usually if you wait longer than a certain amount of window, uh, you want to sand the paint so it has that, uh, like the physical bond. Because the, the first layer of the paint will dry up so it can't get that chemical bond anymore. But if you're just going to put, if you're just doing one color and then putting the clear coat on after it, with this paint, you just want to wait about 10 minutes after the, the base coat or the color is dry and then put the clear coat on after that within an hour. But since I waited longer, what I'm going to do is take a little thousand, bit of thousand grit sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly scuff up the paint to make sure that it still sticks to it well. I'm just going to do it really lightly. You don't need to press on it hard or go nuts. You just kind of get it a little bit dull. And if you want to get the get rid of the texture, like the little lip where the tape was, you want to send sand in this direction against it, and that'll help flatten it out. Also, since when you use such fine sandpaper, the paint can tend to clog up the paper. You could just use a little bit of soapy water as like lubricant to help, and then the, the dust from the paint will go off and it won't get clogged up, so that might be something you want to do. And after you sand it, you want to wipe it off with the soapy water again to get the sanding dust off. And now I'm going to mask it again. And I'm going to use this yellow tape because um, some of the edges came out kind of sloppy like right there. Um, this is a kind of cheaper tape. Not really, I don't know if it's meant to have the really sharp edges. This is an automotive one so it's meant to have like super just sharp edges and not let any paint under. So we'll see if this works better. And I realized from the first time uh, when you're doing the overlap, just overlap the tape by a tiny bit. Don't do it like that much because when you're cutting it, it gets annoying when you're cutting through two layers of tape. Another thing that could help get rid of those slappy edges is kind of you can kind of pull the tape and stretch it a little and then just make sure you press it on really really firmly and get it sticking really good in every little spot. Another thing that could help get rid of those slappy edges is kind of you can kind of pull the tape and stretch it a little and then just make sure you press it on really really firmly. And you just want to press the tape on really firmly, especially at the edges. And I probably recommend this paint right here to use because it says it, uh, where does it say it? It's paint plus primer and it says it bonds to plastic too. And I was looking online and I'm looking up the thing where it said you weren't supposed to paint until after 48 hours. And the reason it said is because the paint, when it dries, it'll get a film over the top. So after an hour, that film starts to form. So that's why you can paint it before an hour. But then after that film starts to form, you want to wait 48 hours for that film to completely dry. So you put another coat over it, the, you know, the chemicals and the wet stuff underneath will still have to seep out. And if you get another coat over it and that film over it, uh, those chemicals and stuff can seep out over time. Uh, they could cause blemishes on the surface, like in the clear coat that you put on after it. You just have problems with it, the paint sticking right. So you want to wait that 48 hours if you didn't paint it within an hour. And if you're masking it again over the paint like this, you're going to have to wait. Painting, you don't want to hold the can like too close. Say hold it, you know, maybe a foot away, 10 inches away. And don't move it too slowly because that if you hold it too close or move the can too slowly, it'll make the paint come on too thick. If you do just quick little passes like that, it's kind of the easiest way to paint. You'll make sure that you don't put it on too thick. 
You just want to take your time and look over it really closely, see if there's any spots that you missed. And I would just wait, you could test on the tape, maybe wait about a half hour since you have to paint the clear coat before an hour is up. Probably wait about a half hour, leave it in the sun or blowing it with a hair dryer to help it dry a bit quicker. <clears throat> and then uh, take the tape off after about that half hour and then uh, hit it with a clear coat. Lines are cleaner with this yellow tape. Uh, that's an automotive tape. I mean, if you get just get a tape that 3M makes, that's just made for painting. Some at Home Depot is going to be made for like painting, you know, with house paint. But it probably work as good for spray. And then when you do the clear coat, if you have these, like the buttons taped together like me, you're gonna wanna remove these and have them separate when you do the clear coat. Cause if you have them, the clear coat goes on really thick. If you have them together, the clear coat might kind of bridge across that gap. And then when you go to take them apart or click it, it'll rip the clear coat and really mess up the look of it. I don't know why that left behind some of the tape residue. So maybe that isn't the best tape to use for this but I'm gonna have to make sure to get rid of that all the residue before I paint it. <clears throat> if you're using a clear coat, probably just buy you know that same brand of clear coat, like the Rust-Oleum, and just paint it right over it before the hour is up. But I actually have some automotive clear coat already, which should be quite a bit stronger, more durable. And since I don't know, <clears throat> you know, I don't, that clear coat is meant to be painted over a base coat of the like the same brand basically to get that chemical bonds together but since it's different I don't want the chemicals in this paint to kind of mess up the clear coat so I'm just gonna wait the 48 hours and then I'm gonna sand it down really lightly again with the uh, thousand grit and then paint over that and if there's paint that you want to remove you could take like some acetone or some paint thinner just dip it in a rag and the sooner after you paint it, the easier it's gonna come off also. And you wanna wear a glove, like acetone is really gross. If there's anything like really precise you wanna do, you could take a little bit of a paper towel, fold it over the tip of the screwdriver, and then that'll give you a nice little edge to work with. You just dip it in the acetone. Another thing you could do if you want to add little tiny bits of paint very precisely, like say there's a little black on the edge showing the logo there, you could spray a little bit of that color into the cap of the spray paint bottle and then take like a very fine paintbrush and you can kind of touch it up, little stuff up like that. All right, so I got it all set up and ready for the clear coat. All right, I taped these down because first of all I want them to be straight up so they're not on their side, easier to paint. And then, well, I don't want paint there either, but then also the like the wind from the paint, these are so light, can kind of blow it around. So I have them all taped down so they don't move. Painting the clear coat, uh, it's a bit different than the base. You kind of don't want to do like little spots. You want to do it like all at once. Like you want to just go, psh, like go back and forth. And you want to kind of overlap a bit. So say that your spray is that thick you want to spray here and then you kind of want to overlap like 50 to 75 percent and then go here and then here like that and even ones and i'd say hold it about a foot away and just kind of move it at like that speed the clear coat's trickier because you don't want to put it on too thin or you'll get a like a really dry textury look it won't look very good but if you put it on too thick you'll get drips if you get the drips you can kind of ruin it uh, Probably two coats is good. So with the first coat, it's uh, okay if you put it on a bit thinner and it gets that dry look. 
And then with the second one, you can put it on a bit thicker and heavier. So the slower you move the can and the closer you hold it, you know, the thicker it'll go on. So it is easier to hold it farther away and go slower if you're starting out. And if you haven't really had much experience spraying with clear coat before, I would just say just practice it on something before you go ahead and, you know. I always do a little test spray first. Make sure the cap's not messed up and it's spraying well. And you know a place where there's not a lot of bugs or dust? If you get even, you know, one little piece of dust in the paint, when it'll kind of, with the clear coat, it'll kind of ruin it because it'll stick to it. You'll be able to see it and it'll give it a texture too. You'll be able to feel it on your hand on the mouse. With the clear coat, you don't want to paint it in direct sunlight. I've never tried, but I've heard it can mess it up. The base coat's all right, but clear coat, paint it in the shade. And you can kind of look at it like really closely to make sure the texture is good, not spraying on like too dry. If it's spraying, if it still looks a little dry and like textury, the texture is called orange peel. So it kind of looks like the texture of an orange peel. You don't want it too textury like that. It won't look shiny, it'll look dry, it kind of ruins the look. Fuck. on this side and on these I'm not trying to really spray the sides I'm just doing it on top because the sides are where the pieces fit together so I don't really want the paint to be thick right there I just got this bin to put over it to make sure no bugs land in and no dust gets in it. it says to wait 10 minutes in between coats so I'm just gonna set a timer on my phone for 10 minutes and then I'll hit it with the second coat and this paint's still really sticky, so make sure you don't touch it in between coats. <clears throat> Take at least an hour of drying before you can even touch it, and even then it'll be really soft. You pretty much want to wait overnight before you touch it at all. Even after 24 hours, it'll probably still be soft enough to where you can scratch it with your fingernail, but you'll be able to touch it fine after that. First, like, two or three days, you want to be really gentle with it. Here you go, it takes a while to dry fully. And this would also be easier if it was like up on a wall because the paint tends to spray better when you're just holding the can like vertically. And then also so when you say the spray is this wide and you're painting like this, <clears throat> you kind of don't want to start in the middle here. You want to start kind of down like along here because if you just start here you can get like a dry like not enough paint along there so you want to do there and then overlap like that. nice and thick like that. Looks like super glossy. So on this one here, I don't know what happened, but you see that little cracking right there with the light blue? So the light blue paint got these cracks over after I sprayed this. It probably has something to do with this paint not being like totally compatible. I don't know what, but it's Something with the chemicals in this paint, maybe not being compatible with that. Maybe a little bit of grease or something under there that messed with it. But it wasn't cracked like that before I sprayed the clear coat on. It's really bothering me. I might fix it first. What I can do, what you can do is wait for the clear coat to fully dry. Same if you get like a drip. Wait like probably at least 24 hours, maybe 48 hours for the clear coat to dry a lot. Take some thousand grit, just sand it down until it's like flat. With this, I'll probably have to sand through the light blue so it's black again, so I might have to mask it off again. Spray a little bit of light blue, wait for that to dry, and then spray the clear coat. But if you get a drip, you can sand it down until it's flat with like 1,000 grit. And then you're going to have to sand down all of the clear coat again after once it's dry, so it'll bond. Alright, so I fixed those little cracks on it. Put on a couple more coats of clear coat. I'm 
set the timer for 10 minutes and do one more coat. And if you don't like the way it looks glossy or like if the feel bothers you, like if it's too slippery, um, I, you take some thousand grit and like a gray scotch bright, just sand down the whole thing and it'll give it a matte look, but it'll also make like the feel a bit more drippy and make it feel really nice. Star.